Hello friends, today we are going to discuss about ketamine in preventing suicide. I am Dr. Suresh Badadmat, Professor of Psychiatry, working at National Institute of Mental Health and Neurosciences, Bangalore. In this video, I will be discussing about a suicide, a public health issue, how to prevent suicide by ketamine, what are the scientific literature available with regard to ketamine in preventing suicide. That's basically the evidence for using ketamine. How to use it? What are the precautions that to be taken when you are giving ketamine will be discussed in this video. Suicide, a public health issue. As per World Health Organization, every year approximately 7 lakh 3000 people death by suicide. It's a huge number my dear friends. 7 lakh people death by suicide. Not only that, for every death by suicide, there is 20 attempted suicide and failed. The numbers are mind-boggling, my dear friends. Let's look into the data from India. Death by suicide in India. The data provided by National Crimes Record Bureau in 2021 clearly reported the number of deaths were 1,64,033. That is, the rate is 12 per lakh, my dear friends. It's a huge number. If you look at it in 2020, the number of deaths were 1,53,052 deaths by suicide. On comparing with COVID death, my dear friends, the total number of COVID death in the past three years is 5,30,757. Per year, it will be 1.7 lakh. That means, the COVID and the suicide are almost equal. We consider COVID as a public health emergency. Why not suicide? Look at this number from National Crimes Record Bureau. 1,64,033 death by suicide in 2021. That equates to 449 death every day. For every hour, it is 18 death. One death by suicide for every 192 seconds, my dear friends. How can we say this is not a public health issue? It's a public health emergency at this point of time, my dear friends. These are reported numbers. Unreported numbers, death by suicide is into three times. So, we need to act now. What are the measures we have taken? in India with regard to control this public health emergency. First and the foremost is Mental Health Care Act of 2017. This legislation facilitated access to treatment. With regard to Section 18, it says that every person with mental illness should have right to access for treatment. Not only that, under Section 115, it decriminalized attempted suicide. What does section 115 subsection 1 says? Notwithstanding anything contained in section 309 of Indian Penal Code, any person who attempts to commit suicide shall be presumed unless otherwise that he is suffering from severe stress and he will not be pressed charge under section 309. Earlier, whoever attempted suicide, section 309 IPC dictated one year punishment or fine or both. Hence, majority of the people who attempted suicide would never come for treatment because there was a penal provisions. Now, this section 115 of Mental Health Care Act 2017 said that nobody who has attempted suicide will be presumed stress and they will not be pressed charge under 309. Not only that, Mental Health Care Act of 2017 took one step ahead under subsection 2 of 115 clearly said that the appropriate government will have a duty to provide care, treatment and rehabilitation for a person who has attempted suicide so that it does not recur. So my dear friends, now from punishing a person who has attempted suicide, we have moved for providing care, treatment and rehabilitation. But however, the same legislation 
comes with some roadblocks that is under section 4 and section 94. Section 4 of the Mental Health Care Act says that capacity to make mental health care and treatment decision. If a person has comprehension or weighing the risk and is able to communicate his decision, he will not be able to provide care to him unless he gives consent. That means we will not be able to provide care if a, for a person with mental illness or a person who is suicidal and he has capacity unless he gives consent. Hence, we need to administer capacity to consent for a person with mental illness whoever attempts suicide. Similarly, section 94 clearly says that nothing in this section shall allow any medical officer or a psychiatrist to use electroconvulsive therapy as a form of treatment. That means you cannot use electroconvulsive therapy as an emergency treatment, my dear friend. That means if a person who is suicidal and if you think you should give ECT on an emergency basis, it is prohibited under this legislation. So the question comes is, what is the best treatment option for acute treatment, especially a person who is highly suicidal? The conventional treatment at this point of time across guideline is to admit the patient in ICU. That is the first. Second step is to give antidepressants such as SSRIs, lithium or clozapine based upon the diagnosis. If the patient is suffering from depression or recurrent depression, either we will choose SSRI or tricyclic antidepressants. If he is highly suicidal, we will not choose tricyclic antidepressants. If the person has bipolar affective disorder, lithium would be the best choice. And if a person with psychosis, clozapine would be the best choice. However, all these medications take time to act. That means there is a lag period of 3 to 6 weeks, my dear friend. What will happen for the next 3 weeks? You have to monitor them. You have to monitor very closely and make sure that he does not attempt or death by suicide occurs. The another option is electroconvulsive therapy. However, you cannot give electroconvulsive therapy as an emergency treatment. You need to admit the patient, examine him and then you have to do a electro, electroconvulsive therapy. That means after taking consent from him, if he does not have capacity, you need to take consent from the nominated representative and then you will do ACT. Of course, the psychosocial treatment such as screening for suicide, psychoeducation, crisis in intervention and non-specific supportive therapy. All these takes time, my dear friends. What will happen as soon as the patient is brought to the emergency with high suicidal thoughts, ideation and he wants to attempt? In such a scenario, does all these treatment help? Is a big question. Along with this, there were many other challenges such as access to treatment of psychiatry that is availability of psychiatrist. Psychotherapist is a big challenge in many countries. Availability of psychiatric ICU bed. Admission into the hospital. Availability of modified electroconvulsive therapy. Cost of psychiatric care in a person who is highly suicidal. That means you will be admitting them into ICU. You will plan for modified ECT. You have to give psychotherapy. The cost will be very huge. Not only that, stigma of electroconvulsive therapy, that is shock treatment. Family members and persons with mental illness will refuse to give consent, my dear friends. In such a scenario, what should a mental health professional do? There came an important molecule called as ketamine. I would consider as a disruptive treatment option for acute suicidal ideas. At this point of time, there is a growing body of evidence of using ketamine in acute suicidal patients, my dear friends. Let's look into the evidence of ketamine in suicide. Let's look into each one of these. Ketamine was introduced in 1964 as an anesthetic agent, my dear friend. It is a combination of both R-ketamine and S-ketamine. 
ketamine is a NMDA, NMDA receptor antagonist. Not only that, it also acts on cholinergic, aminergic and opioid system which are responsible for antidepressant activity. Further, a secondary increase in structural synaptic connectivity that is mediated by neuronal response to ketamine induced hyperglutamergic state. That means neuronal plasticity, my dear friends. All these play an important role in antidepressant activity. Further, the studies have clearly indicated that ketamine can be used in various psychiatric disorder such as treatment resistant depression. Ketamine can be used in suicidal ideas, attempted suicide or deliberate, uh, deliberate self-harm. Ketamine also has been used in depression in bipolar affective disorder. Ketamine also been found to be useful in preliminary studies with regard to non-specific anxiety, generalized pain and anhedonia. Let's look into the studies with regard to ketamine in suicidality. There was an important study published by Abbar and his colleagues in BMJ in 2022. The title of the study was called as Ketamine for the Acute Treatment of Severe Suicidal Ideation. Double Blind, Randomized Placebo Control Trial, my dear friends. Let's look into this study. They recruited 156 patients in this study and they were randomized into placebo and another arm receiving ketamine. They were almost equally distributed. Placebo were 83 and ketamine were 73 patients. And if you look at them, the patients who received ketamine was at the baseline and after 24 hours. Similarly, the patient who were in placebo group received at the baseline saline and after 24 hours again 100 ml saline was received. Further, they were also analyzed at the end of 6 weeks my dear friends. But when you compare, to, compare both the groups with regard to dropouts, dropouts were almost similar. Let's look into the change in suicidal remission rate as per this chart. You can see on the x-axis that is suicidal remission rate and on the y-axis time since the inclusion. Once they received at the baseline ketamine or maybe a placebo that is saline. The purple color indicates the ketamine group and the yellow color indicates the placebo group. When you see both at the end of 72 hours, that means at the end of third day, the ketamine remission rate with regard to suicidal thoughts was phenomenally less than the placebo, placebo group, my dear friends. That means there was a significant difference between placebo and ketamine. However, what happened at the end of six weeks, my dear friends? Again, you can see suicidal remission rate and the time from the baseline, that is after six weeks. Again, the purple line, that is ketamine, was a way ahead when compared to the placebo, my dear friends. So this study clearly indicated that at the end of third day, the placebo group showed only 31% remission, whereas ketamine was 63%. At the end of six weeks, my dear friend, 56% was in placebo group, 69% was in ketamine group, my dear friends. This study concluded by saying that ketamine rapidly induces remission of severe suicidal ideation in adults and also it persisted up to six weeks in one third of the adult patient. Ketamine is confirmed as a safe in short term and rapidly efficient in treating suicidal thoughts, my dear friend. This was not because of the antidepressant was the hypothesis put forwarded by the authors. They clearly said that the analgesic effect of ketamine might explain its benefit in reducing suicidal ideation. Till now we thought that it is antidepressant effect. But this group clearly said that it can be analgesic effect which decreases the suicidal thoughts. Let's look into the systematic review and meta-analysis with regard to ketamine and suicidality. One of the important study was Xiong and his colleagues which was published in Journal of Psychiatric Research in 2021. It is a study which was titled as 
acute anti-suicidal effect of single dose intravenous ketamine and intranasal esketamine in individual with major depression and bipolar disorder as systematic review and meta-analysis. In this study, they were able to search the literature and they found 166 studies which looked into ketamine and suicide. Finally, after applying the inclusion criteria, exclusion criteria, whether they were able to publish in English language, according to this, finally, they selected nine studies were considered for quantitative and 14 for qualitative studies. Let's look into the results of this review. This meta-analysis, which comprised of 341 participants, clearly said that the single dose of IV ketamine or intranasal ketamine, that is esketamine, was associated with robust reduction in suicidal thoughts at second hour, fourth hour, and at the end of 24 hours, my dear friend. It is also found to be effective in repeated dosing of ketamine if there is again recurrence of suicidal thoughts, my dear friend. This was the meta analysis, which is a very important study, according to me. Another study by Witt and his colleagues, which was published in Australian and New Zealand Journal of Psychiatry in 2020. The study was titled as Ketamine for Suicidal Ideation in Adults with Psychiatric Disorder A Systematic Review and Meta Analysis of Treatment Trials. In this study, the authors looked for these studies and they found 24 25 reports of 15 independent trials were included, which comprised of 572 participants diagnosed with predominantly affective disorder who had suicidal thoughts. A single infusion of ketamine has been considered and they assessed the benefit effect after 72 hours. What are the results of this study? Again, this meta-analysis clearly said that anti-suicidal action starts within minutes to hours after infusion of ketamine and then they said that this reduction of suicidal ideation has been reported to endure up to 7 to 10 days that is up to one week you can find the anti-suicidal effect of ketamine repeating the ketamine administration that is up to 0.5 mg per kg, kg body weight that is sub anesthetic dosage was found to be effective and well tolerated and a maintenance dose can be given after one week and that further remitted the suicidal ideas my dear friend now let's discuss whether r-ketamine or s-ketamine which should be given there was a study which was published by Baji and his colleagues in journal of affective disorder in 2021 this study was titled as comparative efficacy of r-ketamine versus s-ketamine in depression a systematic review and meta-analysis in this study included 24 rcts comprising of 1877 participants in this meta analysis. Again, on comparing R ketamine versus S ketamine, R ketamine demonstrated greater overall response compared to S ketamine, greater remission rate, and lower dropout rate with depression with regard to R ketamine when compared to S ketamine. Evidence suggested that R ketamine has a slight higher abuse potential, but higher response rate, higher remission rate and lesser dropout rate. So, my dear friend, at this point of time, R-ketamine has not been approved by FDA, but S-ketamine has been approved by FDA for intranasal use in treatment-resistant depression. But on comparing whether IV versus intranasal ketamine, both were equally effective, my dear friends. However, IV ketamine had a slight edge over intranasal ketamine. But intranasal ketamine can be given on OPD basis even at the primary healthcare level by a primary care doctor after a few training sessions. That means it requires minimal monitoring at the primary healthcare level. Hence, intranasal ketamine can be considered as a boon for preventing suicide, my dear friends. So similarly, then let's look into the evidence with regard to ketamine in emergency department, that is in casualty. There was a study published by Maguire and his colleagues in American Journal of Emergency Medicine in 2021. Let's look into this study. This study 
after doing the literature review, they were able to select those studies which were done in emergency situation or in emergency or in casualty, which comprised of three primary studies comprising of only 77 patients, my dear friend. However, this study gave some preliminary indication telling that ketamine in the dosage of 0.2 mg per kg body weight, that is, at the sub-anesthetic dosage, were able to decrease the depressive symptoms. Further, current evidence suggested that ketamine is a promising, safe potential intervention for acute suicidal patient in emergency dis in an emergency department. Thus, ketamine is a promising agent even at 0.2 mg per kg body weight, my dear friends. Further, there was an important study published in 2023 by Jolant and his colleagues in Therapeutic Advances in Psychopharmacology. The title of the study was Ketamine and Esketamine in Suicidal Thoughts and Behaviors. A systematic review, my dear friends. Again, if you look at the studies here, it comprised of 12 primary RCTs. Primary means those studies which looked into ketamine use in preventing suicide. And similarly, 14 secondary RCTs. That means the secondary objective was want to look into the anti-suicidal property of ketamine. So, these studies were included in the systematic review. So, let's look into the results. This review identified 12 randomized control trial which clearly indicated there is a reduction of suicidal ideation as a primary objective and also in 14 trial as a secondary objective. That means ketamine was very useful in preventing suicide. Intravenous R ketamine was superior to placebo or medazolam within first 72 hours, my dear friends. That was the outcome of the study. Adverse events were minor and transient. In contrast to intranasal ketamine, IV ketamine was found to be useful in this systematic review, my dear friends. What about Indian studies? There is an important study which was published by Sharma and his colleagues from Nimans, Bangalore. This was published in Journal of Affective Disorder in 2020. The title of the study was Antidepressant Effect of Ketamine versus ECT, a pilot comparison. Here, authors of this study compared the efficacy of ECT versus ketamine. They recruited 26 patients who were randomized. Either they received ketamine, that is 0.5 mg per kg body weight on alternative day for 6 dosage over a period of 2 weeks or else they received modified ECT for next 2 weeks, that is 6 modified ECT. Here in this ECT, the anesthetic agent was thiopentone. So now, whether on comparison, whether the 6 infusion of ketamine versus 6 modified ECT with thiopentone as anesthetic agent, which scored over the other? The results of this study was very clear. It clearly indicated that ECT was superior and faster antidepressant effect compared to ketamine in patients with suicidal ideas and with severe depressive episode. Ketamine, however, had a better cognitive side effect profile than ECT, my dear friends. But however, here ECT was compared with ketamine. Of course, ECT scored over ketamine. But again, in this study also found that ketamine also showed decrease in the suicidal thoughts, my dear friend. Another study which was published by Amit and his colleagues in Indian Journal of Psychiatry in 2019. The title of the study was Comparison of Efficacy of Ketamine versus Thiopentone Assisted Modified ECT in Major Depression, my dear friends. This is a very simple study, but very innovative in nature. Here, they randomized 86 patients who met certain criteria, and they randomized 30 patients received ketamine, ketamine as an anesthetic agent with ECT. Another group received thiopentone as an anesthetic agent with ECT. Both the groups were randomized, and they finally analyzed the patients who received ketamine and ECT versus thiopentone and ECT. So, on comparison, 
This study highlighted that beneficial role of using ketamine as an anesthetic agent in modified ECT and they found that the depressive patients scored well with ketamine. That means it rapidly decreased the ketamine, the, the, the ketamine rapidly decreased the depressive symptoms, suicidal ideas. That means this study clearly indicated whenever you are going to deal a patient with major depressive disorder, with suicidal thoughts, please choose ketamine over thiopentone. Summarizing all these studies, my dear friends, ketamine is effective anti-suicidal drug in short-term basis at least up to 72 hours, my dear friends. Ketamine IV scored over intranasal. But however, even intranasal ketamine is found to be effective in reducing the suicidal thoughts. Choose ketamine as an anesthetic agent with ECT when you are giving a patient ECT with for major depressive disorder and suicidal thoughts. Long term effect of ketamine, we do not know at this point of time, my dear friends. Let's understand the mechanism of action of ketamine. To look at the ketamine as an anesthetic agent was, it has an antagonistic effect at an MD receptor. Not only that, it acted on opioid receptor, cholinergic receptors, monoamino receptors, and of course, PHT receptor also. That means it has a multiple effects at various receptors. Not only that, along with NMD antagonism, ketamine metabolites also play an important role in antidepressant effect. Glutamate modulation, that is hyperglutamergic state, further which increases neuronal plasticity plays an important role in the antidepressant effect and anti-suicidal effect, my dear friends. Now the question comes, how to, how to administer ketamine to prevent suicide? Across various studies, the most commonly used is IV ketamine. IV ketamine is used in the sub-anesthetic dosage, that is 0.5 mg per kg body weight, diluted in 100 ml of 0.9 saline, my dear friends. After dilution, this 100 ml of saline should be given over a period of next 40 minutes and observe the patient for next 2 to 4 hours for any kind of illusions, hallucination, dissociation, delusions, agitation should be observed. Once the patient recovers and is oriented to time, place and person and he is very stable, then only you should be allowed to send him home. But however, you need to caution against driving or else working with the machine. And you can give 2 to 3 doses per week of IV ketamine, my dear friends. Along with this, you can also consider to give either intranasal ketamine. Suppose you do not have to give IV mechanisms in your hospital and it is just an OPD basis and it is in a primary care center away from the district hospital. You can choose giving intranasal ketamine in your OPD. The starting dosage should be 56 mg on the day 1 of intranasal ketamine. After the first dosage, then you can give on the second or the third day either 56 or 84 mg per two times per week can be given. This is again intranasal. That is up to four weeks. After four weeks, that is from fifth to eighth week, you can choose either giving 56 or 84 mg once a week, my dear friends. And later, based upon the response of the patient, you can choose giving monthly ones or twice. 56 or 84 milligram and slowly weaning off of intranasal ketamine can be done. Here, what I would like to highlight is intranasal ketamine can be given by a primary healthcare doctor after simple training procedure. What about the drug interaction? One need to be very careful if the patient is on benzodiazepine and is on dependent to benzodiazepine. In such a scenario, both the benzodiazepine and ketamine act acting on NMD receptor may not be effective. Hence, you need to be very careful when you are giving benzodiazepine along with ketamine. Lamotrigine decreases glutamate. Hence, the ketamine may not be effective. Mamantine is an NMDA blocker similar to the ketamine. In such a scenario, what to be done? You need to avoid ketamine. Lithium enhances ketamine activity. 
That means it can act as an augmenting agent. You may not be knowing what is the effect of ketamine along with lithium. Further, dexamethasone and St. John Watts induce a cytochrome enzymes which breaks down ketamine very fast, my dear friends. And these are the drug interaction you need to keep in your mind. Further, what are the comorbid conditions you should be careful? If the patient has comorbid psychosis, choosing ketamine should be thought many times. If the patient has high blood pressure, heart disease, ketamine is contraindicated. Severe diabetes, liver disease, kidney disease can come in the way of metabolism. If the patient has multiple substance dependence, you need to weigh the risk over giving ketamine to these patients, my dear friends. Ketamine in primary health care, can it be given? Of course. Intranasal can be, ketamine can be administered in PHC and monitored over two hours as per the guideline. Even PHC nurse, PHC doctors can be easily trained in assessing suicidal patients and administering ketamine intranasally. Effect of this intranasal ketamine appears to be there up to 72 hours. In the meantime, you got some time to refer this patient to district hospital for further management of suicidal thoughts, suicidal behavior or any other comorbid psychiatric condition, my dear friends. This anti-suicidal effect of ketamine should be leveraged in treating the suicidal thoughts. Ketamine rapidly reduces suicidal thoughts, my dear friends, which is independent of the anti-mood symptoms, that is, antidepressant effect. Ketamine is a robust molecule, my dear friends, in preventing suicide in short term. Ketamine can be used to address the public health issue of suicidal attempt, suicidal thoughts or attempted suicide, my dear friends. Repeated dosing of ketamine as found to be useful and it does not cause a stachyphylaxis. This brief efficacy of ketamine should be leveraged in public health to prevent suicide or suicidal thoughts. However, this brief effectiveness of anti-suicidal activity should not be dampening you. This period of 3 to 4 days can help you in initiating, referring and doing crisis intervention and getting psychosocial help to prevent suicide can be a boon because every minute counts in preventing suicide, my dear friends. What are the challenges and opportunities here? Suicidal behavior does not occur not only because of psychiatric illness. Suicide is a complex phenomena with multiple causes and genetic involvement. In such a scenario, there is no research with regard to the efficacy of ketamine in suicide because of stress. That means we need to study whether ketamine can reduce suicidal thoughts without any psychiatric illness and there is suicide is just only because of stress. At present, there are no studies at this point of time, my dear friends. And this is a challenge but an opportunity to do ketamine study in suicidal thoughts without any psychiatric disorder. There are no studies at this point of time with regard to adolescents and older patients. Further, lack of knowledge with regard to long-term effect of ketamine, we do not know. Further, the liability of abuse of ketamine, that is dependence of ketamine, is a threat, my dear friends. Need for to study ketamine in outpatient patients, in emergency situation, in primary health care, in community, is an opportunity, my dear friends. Either you can do the study and to see the efficacy of ketamine in preventing suicide in various population, either in the community or in the PHC or in the district hospital. To conclude, my dear friends, ketamine is a NMDA receptor antagonistic and it is very effective in a sub anesthetic dosage in preventing suicide in short term basis. Main indication for ketamine is treatment resistant depression and suicidal thoughts. Repeated use of ketamine does not decrease the effect. That means it does not cause a stachyphylaxis. Hence, you can use ketamine as a maintenance dosage to prevent suicide. Ketamine can play a very important role in controlling this epidemic of suicide post-COVID era, my dear friends. 
However, we need to do systematic study. Double blind RCTs are required at the community level, at the primary care level, at the district hospital to know the effectiveness of ketamine in preventing suicide because of stress, my dear friends. Thank you very much for giving your valuable time. Stay safe. Thank you.